So I want to thank you guys for sticking around and everyone new. I want to welcome you to the show. I want to remind you that the super chat is open and to like, share, and subscribe. Tonight, my guest is Lily Nova. So let's bring her in and say hi. Hi, how's it going? Hi, <laughs> good. How are you? I'm doing very well. We live in very exciting times. <laughs> Right. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So Fair. for anyone who doesn't know who we're, oh, I'm lagging. I live in the middle of nowhere, so. I think we're good now. So, okay. So for anyone who doesn't know who you are, do you want to tell us a little bit about your Yeah. So my name is Lily Nova. And about two years ago, I, I started getting, it was whenever COVID happened, I started getting into astrophotography, which is taking pictures of the night sky and the stars. And this is in the beginning of lockdown. And so I would started going out under the stars every night <laughs> with my camera. And shortly after that, I started being visited by UFOs. And I started documenting them and they just, I, I was basically like a UFO magnet. Suddenly just, they just started popping up everywhere left and right. And so I was catching a lot of them on camera and just kind of like investigating them because it was very fascinating and just mind boggling to come to face to face with, you know, crafts and beings not from earth to know that we are not the only ones out there. So that's kind of like how it all began. And as I went documenting them, we kind of had like, um, we kind of made like an agreement where I would go out shooting and then they would pop up and I would catch them on camera. So we began kind of like a working relationship. So that's what I do now. Um, that took over my life. <laughs> my normal life is over. <laughs> now I'm like 100% in this space. And, uh, you know, just kind of like looking to discover the truth and see see what else is out there. So that's kind of summary. So, and you, you have been taken. <laughs> you have been taken, correct? Well, I didn't... I didn't know that I had been taken until not too long ago, actually. So it was very like respectful, nothing like scary or intent. Well, kind of some things intense, but really they kept their distance and they were very respectful towards me. So I had no idea. Like whenever I told my story to MUFON, which is the largest UFO uh, investigative network in the world, that was the first thing that they said. They're like, have you been taken? Because of how many encounters I had. And I thought, no, at the time, I haven't, I haven't been taken where I remember it, but whenever I was younger and I know, I know that it happens, I just don't remember it. So I know it does routinely happen. And whenever I was younger, um, I was probably like three years old. My, my mom told me this story, but she said she got up in the middle of the night she went downstairs, it was completely dark, and I was standing in the kitchen with my nightgown at like one or two o'clock in the morning at three years old, and looking under this table, and I looked up at her, and I was like, told her, they went right through the wall. They just went right through the wall. And it really freaked her out. It kind of freaked me out hearing that. I thought it was ghosts, but now I realize that it was extraterrestrials, <laughs> and I have been having extraterrestrial encounters all of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fascinating. And now it's, it's led you to have your own basic YouTube channel where you help others, essentially. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of us have more than you'd think have experiences or have sightings. Yeah, a lot of people come to me because whenever I first started having these things happen to me, um, nobody believed me at first. and It was very isolating. Um, so in sharing, now I share on YouTube in people who have these experiences or they want to have these experiences. They come to me and um, 
Yeah, and it's a growing community. There's so there's so many people out there. And if you have ever, if anybody in the audience has ever seen a UFO before, it was not by accident. They only reveal themselves in very intentional ways. So they were they knew that you were looking. <laughs> <laughs> so and what what do you think i mean is it normal for people to come to you who want to have this experience because of somebody who has had experiences i I've, I've never wanted them you know with the things i've experienced so i find that i find that odd when somebody's like i want to have this experience because it's kind of like no no you don't not really yeah i was just about to say that so there are i have heard of negative experiences my experiences have only been very, very positive. And so that's what that's what I help people with just to connect with these positive beings in a like a spiritual way to to connect with them. Um, no, no, like negative stuff. I know there there are some negative uh, cases and I that's terrible. I, I think it is like there's I feel like most of them out there are good, but there are, you know, there still are those negative ones and you have to kind of watch out for. But I'm very yeah, specific yeah. and intentional that, you know, I'm only I only connect with or talk to beings of the highest love and light. I don't deal with the negative stuff. But, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you had like a negative experience. I'm sorry about that. Oh no, not not with aliens. Just with some paranormal things in general. Oh. I've I've seen what I think are craft. I've seen them twice in my life, but that's it. I've never had like encounters. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I've, usually... I've seen ghosts and things like that. Yeah, what I found a lot of the time, whenever you have a UFO encounter, or even if it doesn't have to be a close encounter, like you just saw them in the sky, that still counts. You saw them. What I found is a lot of people who see them ever, their psychic abilities are mm -hmm. developed and then they start perceiving other things like it may be like ghosts or spirits. Like after I started, you know, communicating with them and developing my gifts, my dad who passed mm -hmm. away to visit me and my grandma and my uncle and suddenly like I could like talk to the spirit world too. So yeah, I get what you're saying. It's funny mm -hmm. because a lot of the time, yeah. like ghosts, ghosts and UFOs, all of that spiritual stuff is like it's all connected. Do you think that some ghosts could, like, some aliens could be mistaken for ghosts? That I, I do, I, I do think so. Yeah, some, some of them, some of the extraterrestrials, they're more energetic or they're more light than than our mm -hmm. physical bodies. So sometimes they may, or they may be projecting themselves like holographically, like a hologram. Mm -hmm. um, so they may not be, if, if it's like some people say that they see one that it almost looks see-through, almost transparent. So that'd be like, they were just kind of like putting a holograph up. So that could be the case. Yeah, I think, I think that, yeah, they could be um, mistaken for ghosts, yeah. So what do you think of the recent UFOs that have been shot down? Do they sound like anything that you have seen mm -mm. in the sky? <laughs> mm -mm. No. No. No, nothing, nothing like what I've seen. And honestly, I feel like they wouldn't, I know that they wouldn't mm -hmm. allow themselves to get shot down. They're, they're way too smart. They're way too fast. Their technology is too good. So I know that that, that wasn't them who got shot down unless it was maybe kind of like maybe they were testing to see what would happen but there i know there were no beings in that craft whenever it got shut down yeah. shot down yeah so i so, think it's a, a step towards disclosure but don't be afraid of like what's i hope that the media is not trying to like freak people out about what's in the sky you know yeah do you think that people are ready for disclosure do you think do you think that people can handle it especially seeing how we handled the pandemic. Do you think mm -hmm. people can handle, you know, full disclosure, basically? Mm -hmm. uh, that depends. I think more and more people are being able to handle it every day. And we all just kind of have to do our part to help prepare people. 
but the the energy is shifting like now people are starting to have spiritual experiences or um ufo experiences or just kind of like life-changing experiences where they take a look at themselves or they have like some sort of an awakening so we're definitely getting there but yeah i think there are some people who would have a really hard time with it um yeah i yeah. totally agree <laughs> um we have a couple questions already mm -hmm. um give me a second because some of them aren't in cast let's see i'm gonna just mark them real quick give me a second mm -hmm. let's see about this i i rearranged my setup so it's kind of a mess over here so lon wants to know he said i'd be interested to know what crystals minerals that lily is attracted to hmm yeah that's a good question that's actually one of the things that um the star beings i call them began to they told me to contact them or to do any like spiritual work. Crystals are very, very important. They can do all kinds of cool things. Um, so like quartz, amethyst. Um, I've got a Shungite pyramid here with me. If you haven't heard of Shungite, look it up. It's really cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, quartz moonstone is actually my favorite moonstone. I do like moonstone as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um Albert wants to know details on your interaction, messages received, insight into their society. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that they began teaching me was that our DNA is very important and our history isn't what we think it is. Um, they've shown me different times in our history with beings being involved in ancient Egypt. Um, They've shown me Atlantis. Um, they've shown me, fast forward closer to our time, Native American tribes with the star beings. And the star beings were helping them to start agriculture and, and build their cities. So all of those huge structures, like the pyramids and all of that around the world, like extraterrestrials actually <laughs> made those, or us from the past. We went through a global reset after Atlantis fell. So basically, we had to start over from scratch. But the star beings have been here for a long time helping. And we're actually genetically mm -hmm. related to them. Our DNA, we have part of their DNA. And our DNA is very, very special. Scientists say that only 95 to 97% of our DNA, it, it, they say that most of it seems to be junk DNA. It's not doing anything. It's dormant. And so that was one of the first things that they were teaching me. It's not, it's not that it's dormant. You have amazing capabilities in your DNA. It's just not activated. So that's one of the big things that's going on right now. And um, I can't remember, like epigenetic, there are new fields in science coming out with this now, like showing that you can actually turn genes on and off and more about the DNA. So I'm excited. More will... Uh, more will be revealed soon, I believe this year about our DNA, but it's very, very important. So basically they are, some of them are our cosmic brothers and sisters. They've been here for a very long time. And yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like the main. Um, so why do some people, no, go ahead, you finish. Um, I was just going to also add like some of the other messages that they that they've told me is, you know, basically we've we've been asleep. We we don't remember who we are. Um, so now it's time to like wake up to activate our our gifts, our potential um, as we like raise our vibration and activate this DNA. Life becomes easier. We're just in a very like kind of dense tough like hard world with a lot of like good and bad so that's another reason why they're here they're going to help us move into a more advanced peaceful um unite with each other instead of all of the fighting and war and racism and all of that so that's 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 a big big part of what's going on right now and 
and that's some of the meditation you can as well for yourself. Okay. What's that? I heard you say meditation. Some meditation. Some of the mm -hmm. activating your higher self and such. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. That's what. Yeah, sure. So they also began teaching me. Well, they began teaching me all of these things, and then how to activate your DNA, how to unlock new gifts, and all of this, um, all of this stuff. And uh, oops, she's gone. I think. <laughs> so what I do? Oh, there you are. What I do uh, on my channel every Sunday is I host like a a live guided activation slash meditation and we'll do different things. Um, we may connect with different types of beings like the Pleiadians, the Lyrans, different Syrians, beings from Sirius. And Sirius star is really big in ancient Egypt if you look into that. So the, the beings from Sirius had a really um, uh, a big connection with ancient Egypt. Um, so we'll connect with different beings. We'll work on different things, kind of like cleansing, clearing, healing, uh, developing new gifts. The one I'm doing this weekend is how to connect with your higher self. So it's fun. Um, Albert, they, they're very interesting. I've watched a few of them. They are very interesting. Um, and powerful. Albert wants to also know, um, yeah, they are exactly. <laughs> Um, I'm guessing he wants to know the different species you've com come in contact with and the social order in the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, species. So the first ones that I was contacted by were Lyran. They had light blue skin and no hair, but they looked very humanoid. They had like silver uh, spacesuits on, like Star Trek looking. Um, and so they were Lyran from the Lyra constellation. I have met different beings from Sirius. Some of them had the elongated heads um, and no hair. Some of them have hair and some of their eyes may be like a little bit more almond. Or I've seen also the more gray-like beings with the, you know, the big dark almond eyes. Um, also beings from the star Arcturus called Arcturians. They are very, they're like master healers. They're among the most advanced in our galaxy, these Arcturians. And they're just wonderful, very peaceful, very benevolent, very, very advanced. Like they've been around for a really long time. So they're great. And then the Pleiadians, the Pleiadians are pretty popular. Um, we're very closely related to the Pleiadians. Look very much, they look very similar to us. They just look Nordic. A lot of the time they have blonde hair and blue eyes and they just look very human. They just may be taller. So, and then I've also seen some beings from the Andromeda galaxy. So that's kind of like the main, also Orion. Yeah, the Orion constellation. There's a lot of different types of beings there as well. And I don't know. Do you if think some people get, oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I don't know if there was like, Why if there's really. Some some <laughs> go ahead. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Oh, okay. Um, why why do you think some people get taken as opposed to others like mm -hmm. in your opinion i think it has to do with like bloodlines and dna a lot um because our dna is apparently maybe considered like genetic royalty there's a lot of really great things in our dna there's a lot of really great potential mm -hmm. so uh, some of us may be taken because they are, they're using our DNA, our genetics. Um, and I know for like myself and others who have had benevolent experiences, some people may be taken to kind of just for kind of like upkeep to make sure that they're doing okay and to kind of check and see, you know, how we are doing because we eat terrible things and there's a bunch of toxins in the environment, all things like that. So they'll kind of just take yeah, to run tests on and, and see how we're doing. <laughs> so it's very scientific. And how bad we're probably poisoning ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think, like, do you think your mom has had encounters as well? 
you think that's mm-hmm. something in your in your family, like a generational yeah. thing? Yeah. Um, actually, I, I, I realized this not too long ago. So, yes, I do found out not too long ago that my mom also has has had experiences. She saw a UFO back in, I don't know if she was like high school. Yeah, she was like 16. And then she had one other kind of weird experience. Um, and yeah, I come to find that it, I believe it runs in families a lot. If you're, mm-hmm. and I think that has to do with the genetics, a certain bloodline, they'll they'll kind of like keep an eye on certain families and, and you know, through through time. And in your experience, for the people who have been coming to you with their experiences and for help, is it more women than men or men than women? Hmm. That's a good question. Probably probably more women come to me. Um, yeah, I think more women come to me. But I think they're, you know, men too. Men just may, may not be as... Uh, a lot of people will just kind of like block it out probably, or, you know, they're not supposed to know. So more, more women come to me. I don't know if that's just because of my, um, you know, I'm more appealing to women on my channel <laughs> to talk to. Them. <laughs> no, I, I was just wondering like who, you know, is there a, a reason like do men have more experiences than women or things like mm. that? So I was just, I was curious yeah. about that. But yeah, no, I think it's, it's, it'd probably be about even. Yeah, it'd probably be about even, but more women talk mm-hmm. to me about it. Yeah. Because basically we're more open than men. It's some it's some things. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where do you basically go? Do you just like, if for anyone who wants to maybe do astrophotography or go out and do it, do you just go out into a field or is there like a special place mm-hmm. or? Mm-hmm. Not to yeah, give away so the place a- you go, but... Right. Yeah. Some some cities have astronomy parks. So that would be a good place to start. You could just like Google astronomy park in your area. And those may be like 24 hour parks that are in a little bit more of a rural area. So that's a good place to go. Like I have one that's probably about 25 minutes away from me. So um, but if you really want to go out to like dark skies going like an hour or two out of the city is where you'll be able to see the Milky Way. Um, But yeah, as long as it's like, you can go to parks at night, um, state parks, things like that. So basically anywhere that there's an open field of bunch of stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And not too much light because yeah, yeah. not, not just, yeah, the least amount of lights as possible. (laughs) You said here that you basically had an agreement with them. Like when you go out, you call them down basically and you can take pictures of them. How does that work? If mm-hmm. you don't want to give away your secret, that's fine. But <laughs> I'm just no, it's fine. I mean, about that. Yeah. I mean, I have a video on my YouTube channel, how to make contact with UFOs. <laughs> so I kind of like break down my process in that video. Um, uh, but really... Yeah, that was kind of just already an agreement that that I had with them. I didn't know it until, you know, they kept popping up. And I'm like, well, it seems like they want me to take pictures of them because they're basically getting right in front of my camera. Um, but for the, like the average person setting the intention, um, you know, going out stargazing and just you set the intention that you want to make contact with uh beings of the highest love and light or want to see a ufo of the highest love and light but you're specific just like with um it i mean it could almost be like a ouija board like you want to make sure that you're only talking to positive or only inviting positive things and so just be specific with ufos too because they're very closely connected with the spiritual realm so Mm -hmm. yeah so just saying you know ask if you could see a UFO of the highest love and light and just kind of like hang out and keep, keep your eye on the sky and see what happens. So I'll definitely have to try that. I, especially when summer comes and it's not as cold or snowy here and it just starts snowing mm-hmm. again. So oh, yeah. <laughs> we have some more questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. 
Albert wants to know, when you've had your experiences with ETs, are they physical, waking, reality, or is it done via meditation or astral consciousness? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So in the beginning, it was purely physical, uh, where I would see these ships, and then kind of like a, a telepathic communication began. So I'd see the ships, or I'd see orbs, and then we'd kind of, we'd be talking back and forth. And then as I began meditating, then they began sending me, it became more astral, me seeing them with my eyes closed through the third eye. So, and more recently, I have actually had some beings. I've taken a picture of a being that was right in front of my face and I didn't see it, but it showed up on the camera. So there can actually be beings around us at all times. Yeah, just like similar mm -hmm. to ghosts. Like you may catch a ghost on camera, but you couldn't see it with your eyes or orbs. Similar happens, can happen with the star beings as well. They're in a different dimension. So they're in their frequency is different. So they're, they may be right in front of us. Also, our eyesight's very limited. We can only see a tiny, tiny fraction of the, the light spectrum. So they can be in front. I've had that happen where they were right by me and I felt them, but I couldn't quite see them. But yeah, usually I see them through meditation and in astral. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And mm -hmm. Albert, I'm not sure if this question is directed to you or to Lon, but he said, um, did you send some, I think it's directed to Lon. Uh, did you send some 11 or lack of, ethnic compassion from the greys as often reported during abductions. I think that, that was for Lon. I'm not sure. Because you said you haven't. Have you had any encounters with the greys? I have, actually. Um, and there are oh, different yeah. types of okay. greys, too. Yeah. yeah, I have. The ones that I've seen were, they were, like, shorter. There was three of them. And they were actually like helping me. They began like I, I would it would telepathically like send me their face a lot. And then I, I just, just started seeing like this gray face everywhere. And I'm like, who are you guys? <laughs> and and eventually they kind of like introduced themselves. <laughs> yeah. And I mm -hmm. found out that they were actually from the Andromeda galaxy, but they were using mm -hmm those more dense bodies to be down here and work with us physically, if that makes sense. So, so they were grays, but they were actually from Andromeda and they were actually like very nice. They did, they helped do like energy and body work on me. Um, so yeah, that was my encounter with them. And I have seen some other ones, but they are, they can be kind of quiet and reserved. Like they don't, they may not always say, say much. Mm -hmm. different types of grays because I've I've heard bad things about them and I've heard good things about them so do you think there are different types yeah I do I do I believe that there are um different types but if you go into like the 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 negative stuff I think those grays are they're kind of like almost like minions they are just doing like a job mm -hmm. that isn't like a positive one, but they're just kind of, they're almost like being controlled to do those things. Um, so I think that's, that's the majority of like the negative uh, abductions and things like that. Um, and there are, yeah, there's tons of other grays. I, I've seen quite a few different like kind of variations, but I don't know too, too much about them. I just know the, the grays that I saw who were actually from Andromeda and they were nice. Um, but yeah, there are, there are a bunch of different variations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the one I like you people come to with their experiences or their stories? What is one experience or story that stuck up? It has stuck out to you from somebody who's come to you. If you could share it. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I get things like that every day. Let me try and think. <laughs> um, 
Well, I'll, just the first thing that came off the, the top of my head, somebody in in my audience was uh, did the Arcturian activation that I had on my channel a while ago. If you go under my lives, I, I had an Arcturian one. Mm -hmm. And he emailed me and said, like later that day or the next day, he had a blue orb like UFO manifest in his house after doing that activation, which was pretty wild. Um, in the oh, wow. Arcturian. Oh, yeah. yeah, pretty wild. I haven't had like an orb, like a light manifest in my house like that before, but I have heard quite a few people who have had that. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the time, the Arcturians, that, that specific type of being, they may show up as blue orbs. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, he had an orb manifest in his house. Um, yeah, that's kind of like the first thing that pops off. Pop, the stories just get really wild. They get really crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I know with, you know, working with Law and then being around Law, some of the stories and reports that he gets are, are very, very wild. And then they're very just amazing stories mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Um, right. Orbs, my, my boyfriend, he's, he's sorry. He's, he's a child. And he had had, he was driving, he goes to work in the middle of the night, he was driving out, and he had had an orb cross over in front of the truck. And I mean, this oh, is, he's driving a semi, so he can't, like, slam on the brakes. And he said it was just, he was stunned. I, I forget wow. what color he says, but he said it just basically shot right across the road. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, they, they, they'll kind of just like photobomb too. They'll just pop up out of nowhere and do something crazy and then disappear. <laughs> That's awesome. So do you think these orbs are, are extraterrestrial? Do you think they're, you know, spiritual? Yeah, I think it's both. Both. Um, the So there was an orb that I saw. I've, I've caught orbs on video where you could actually see like the silhouette of a being, but it wasn't an orb like this big. So I, th yeah, you can actually, see, you can actually see their silhouette. So I think mm -hmm. these beings, they can project themselves as orbs, but that may actually be like a whole ship or something, mm -hmm. you know, bigger. And they can like kind of project their consciousness in a little orb. So, yeah, I don't know how exactly they do that, but I think that's what they do a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas said it was orange. Or mm -hmm. always orange. I've seen orange ones. I've seen orange ones. I've, UFOs, yeah. I've, I've never seen anything like it, but he just, when I had gotten up in the morning, he just, that was the first thing he told me, and I'm like, Okay, I don't know what to make of it, but okay. He's like, I wow. never see anything like. That. I'm like, got me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what what do you think is the one extraterrestrial that everyone has has seen, or at least come encounter with? Well, there seems to be a lot. If you like, look up information on this, just kind of in the mainstream. A lot of like the grays have been kind of highlighted, but there are so many other species out there. Um, but I think grays can be like a pretty popular one. There's also a lot of a lot of accounts with the Nordic beings. They look more human with the blonde hair. There's there's a few accounts from like the the 40s, 50s, 60s of these Nordic looking beings. That's whenever I, I came across those stories and it was before even like Roswell came out um, before Roswell happened. So they, they've been around for a long time, these Pleiadian beings with the, the light hair. So they're a popular uh, one as well. One wants to, one wants to just believe that she's our child. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think a lot of us are. I want, want to elaborate on what that is. I have no idea what it is. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So another word for it could be like star seed is, is kind of like the, the 
mainstream word for it, but a star seed or like a star child is somebody who comes from another planet or another place and they incarnate on earth as a human, but they have an old soul. They've, they've lived lifetimes in other places. And so some people who may have a hard time on earth, it may be because they're not used to this planet and they've lived other places that maybe were friendlier or nicer <laughs> or, um, you know, healthier. Yeah. So that's, we yeah, that's a common that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Albert wants to know around the orbs like a ring of light. Hmm. I don't know if I've specifically ever seen like a ring around the orb, but there are tons of different orbs. Some people send me pictures in video. So that could be, that could be something interesting. I've never seen that personally though. I've, but that is interesting. I've never heard of it in the, on an orb in general. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I believe it has so. or not, but... Yeah, there's all kinds of different weird looking things. Whenever you see a UFO, it like sometimes you'll get like the physical ships or like the tic tac, things like that. But a lot of the time they will come as like energetic balls or just mm -hmm. kind of like lights and the energy in them. It just it behaves differently than anything that that we have or anything that we could do. It just looks different from a different dimension, different technology. Yeah. Have you ever seen any day, like any ships during the day? Oh, yeah. That's, I used to meet them every day at sunset. <laughs> yeah. The two, the two I had seen, I mean, it was, it was broad daylight that I had seen them. That's yeah. why I wonder. And it's just like the one I even mistook for a blimp, but it was very strange because I had commented to my wife, like, you didn't tell me but, like the, the blimp was that because sometimes we do have a blimp around here. And he's like, no, it's not out. And I said, okay, well, it's gone, you know, because it, it had just gone past neighbor's house. I was sitting in the grass. Our son was like in the yard. And I'm like, I can't get a picture. It's gone. Oh, no. it came back the other way a little faster and i'm just like staring at it and the way it was moving was just not right there you could tell it just that's not how a blimp if it was a blimp should be. and i'm like mm -hmm. i i don't think this is this is a blimp and i just i hung up the phone i took some quick pictures of it they're slightly but yeah it was it was like maybe three o'clock in the afternoon yeah no yeah they will they will show up in broad daylight and it may just be for a second. I had a couple just earlier this week. I was outside, like sitting in the field. I kind of I set the intention and and asked if they would appear for me. I was sitting out in this field, probably about like 20 minutes later. I look up and there's two lights up in the sky. And this was at like 3 p.m. Two lights, and then they start like circling around each other. So it was two ships. They started circling around each other and they were there for a couple minutes. I caught some of it on camera and mm -hmm. they were there for uh, a few minutes and then they just disappeared. And I was like, thank you. So yeah, they can show up during the day. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was very surprising to me that that happened because, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, I thought it was a blimp. We get airplanes around here that certainly was not an airplane because you you would know what an airplane looks like, and mm -hmm. it was something I've never seen like before. Mm -hmm. um, where can people go to see your photography, like your pictures? Do you have them out there somewhere? Yeah, I've got some on my for like my space photography. I've got some on my mm -hmm. website at lilynovaspaceart.com, and I have like a gallery of. Like you could look through prints or digital downloads, their screensavers. And then on my YouTube channel, I just recently, just like two days ago, posted um, a video how to photograph UFOs in the spiritual realm. And that has some of my pictures in it as well. That has some of my UFO footage. So 
So yeah, in some of my content, yeah. Yep. Okay. Do you do you want me to share a couple pictures real quick? If you can. Yeah, I can. I've got it. I can do that real quick. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pull that up. Okay, let me know if you can see it. Okay, we can. Yeah. Okay. okay, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So here's a here's one of my pictures. This is of the Andromeda Galaxy. So it's a really close up picture of space. You can see the galaxy right there. That's our closest neighbor. Here's just another picture that, that I took. That, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty amazing what art is. Honestly, incredible. Here's oh, okay. Here's the Orion Nebula. So this is in the Orion constellation near Orion's belt. It's a nebula. And oh, here's the Pleiades, which is where the, the blonde beings are from. A lot of the blonde ones, the Pleiadians, the whole star cluster. Oh, wow. and I can show um, a daytime picture real quick of me uh, making contact with the ship. So I set my camera up and I got in front of the camera. I began like meditating i i felt okay. them there already and i asked them if they would get on the picture and then whenever i look back at the picture we had a ship right here it appeared in three different photos i've got a better one of it so it's right up there here's a close a better one of it so that's a that's a spaceship <laughs> It's got like a weird. That's amazing. That was... Yeah, this is my favorite. This is my favorite one. It's really, really good. Um, I could share like one other one. Here's a. Here's one other one where I got in the picture and then I caught them in one photo and they look like mm -hmm. two black triangles and it there's a strange tear there. I, I feel like it's mm -hmm. like a tear in space time or a portal opening up or something. But yeah, that, so that was another picture that I caught of them during the day and they're really fast. So it's hard to get actually, you know, quality pictures of them. Yeah. No, I understand, no. Kelly. But those are amazing. They really are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's kind of our thing. Um, I'm just making sure. Mm -hmm. This is uh this is the one I was talking about where it was right in front of my face, but I didn't see it. It showed up on camera. Oh wow. Yeah, it almost looks like a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. You could almost see some if you look like down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think oh, it wow, could be a group amazing. of them. It could be a group of them because you see like arms, legs right there. So that could be a group of them. At first I thought it was one and then later whenever I zoomed in I was like holy crap this could be like a whole crew just somehow they're appearing like this yeah but yeah so there's that's a few amazing. of the pictures that truly is 
They oh, are beautiful. My. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, we have some more questions. So Albert wants to know, do you see rings as some of, uh, sorry, do you see rings as some sort of conduit or portal between dimensions or frequencies? I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I didn't quite look at them like that before, but I could see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some people believe. And Earth is Pam Smith wants to know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. I was just reading it. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh pam smith wants to know some people believe the earth is part of hell what does the lake believe so i think that it can be like what you make it but um mm -hmm. i think it can be that has the potential to be something very very beautiful but yeah this is a very difficult place even like with the the galactics out there they know that earth is is kind of a hard place to to be and to kind of work through so i wouldn't call it hell but that's that's a big reason why they're all starting to show up now because they're helping us to to make it into a beautiful lovely place we've just kind of been like tricked this this whole time um our power's been taken away uh there's just been wars control all of that so yeah <laughs> what what so do I you think, think when people say this is basically a prison planet mm -hmm. yeah well and something else that comes up is with so I, I found out that reincarnation is real whenever I started seeing these extraterrestrials because they started showing me past lives of mine as an extraterrestrial on these different places, which a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have volunteered to come down to Earth at this time to help raise, you know, raise the frequency, help to raise the planet. Because, yeah, humanity, it was just getting really dense here. Um and I'm sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, it's just me. It's been one of those weeks for me, so don't worry about it. Um, so I think when people say this is a, basically a prison planet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, something else that came up whenever you said that was, so with reincarnation, I do believe, because I've had to work through it myself, we can collect karma and then get stuck repeating the same things. So I find mm -hmm. that a lot for myself and, and I do readings on other people and that will come up a lot where basically you, you keep experiencing terrible, like crappy things or, you know, whatever. And it's because there's kind of like a karmic loop that's playing out. Just like if you always attract mm -hmm. narcissists or you, you know, always attract like bad relationships or you always attract, you know, this, that, all of those things, which I was guilty of doing all, all sorts of that kind of stuff. And then I kind of like realized mm -hmm. that it was like a pattern and then I changed it. So I think a lot of people get stuck in that karma and it can definitely seem like a prison whenever you're doing it over and over and over again. It's not easy here on earth, but that's, that's what just focusing, focus on the positive and don't watch the news. Don't listen to all of the fear mongering, all of that stuff. Cause we're going through a really big shift and things are just getting really messy so that they can get really good afterwards. Like we're going to be able to like get rid of all of these diseases, have healthy food, healthy water, um, abundance on the planet, not being so sick, not having so many diseases. So we have to deal with a lot of crap, but as we go along and as disclosure happens, and as we advance, it's become it's going to become a lot better on this planet, is what I'm trying to say. And Pam Smith made a good comment. She said, what was I thinking volunteering? Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, at times I don't blame her because I think the same thing because, 
Yeah. You basically pick your parents, you pick, you know, where you're going to be in the end timeline. I do believe in all that. I tend to agree with her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so also you had put on Facebook for those who don't know that you're going to be on the panel. Do you want to tell us a little, a little bit about A little bit about what? Uh, just being on down. the travel channel. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be on the travel channel. That might be in like, I think it's the, t the 23rd. And um, oh, okay. un yeah, unexplained caught on camera season. I think it's season three, whatever season is playing right now, episode four. So it'll be be airing on I know the 23rd is one of the days. So if you just look up like unexplained caught on camera episodes list i'm in episode four <laughs> and i'll be okay. yeah so i'm the ufo one and then there's two other stories that are going to be mixed in and they're paranormal i'm i'm the ufo one so yeah okay. that'll be next week it looks like oh that's great i was hoping i didn't miss it because i forgot to ask you when it was airing before we mm -hmm. did the show and everything so that's yeah great. so i think it's okay. airing three days also three days like the 23rd three days in a row Maybe like next weekend or something like that. Oh, that's great. So hopefully everyone will check that out and watch yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you want to tell everyone where they could find you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can find me on, I'm on YouTube a lot. You can find me through my YouTube channel, Lily Nova Starseed. And we do activations every Sunday, kind of like group meditations, it's very like supportive. There's super cool people in the chat. We like do it together. So we're kind of like working through everything together. Plus it's very, it's very powerful. There's ones for different things. Um, and then I just had to make a new Instagram started from scratch. My new Instagram is lilynova.official. And, and then I do have TikTok also, uh, lilynova.in.space. So I, I'm, I'm on all three of those. Okay. Um, do you actually place. do you actually sell your prints? I forgot to ask you that. You do. Yeah, yeah, I do. If you go to uh, lilynovaspaceart.com, I have a prints tab, and then I also have a digital download, so you can buy like a screensaver, or you can buy a print. And that, yeah, that's yeah, that would be really awesome. They're very beautiful. I actually just and recently got a blanket with with one of the pictures on it and it turned out so good. I'm so, <laughs> I, oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah. could even start selling those. I mean, I mean, they are, I do. I, they really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah. I have, I have that, uh, that blanket on my website actually. <laughs> it's got the Pleiades on it and the <laughs> one with the moon. So there's other, there's oh. merch too. Oh, so there's God. like, starseed hoodies um ufo hoodies and shirts and things like that like i have a mm -hmm. coffee mugs and things with ufos on it and stuff like that so mm -hmm. that's also on there i may actually have to get one because i'm like a coffee mug collector mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's frowned upon in my house about how many coffee mugs i have but you can never have too many coffee mugs oh same. that's my that's role. what i mostly like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are most yeah. of my co coffee mugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with having a nice collection, in my opinion, no matter what anyone says. Yeah. Um, before no, we go, we have it. one more question for you. Mm -hmm. So Albert wants to know, he says, I'm afraid to make contact and keep uh, dive mostly off. It's not terror. It's just trepidation of the exotic unknown. What would you say is advice to someone with trepidation? Mm -hmm. That's a really, really great question. So first off, like we all have star families. So think of it like you are, you're connecting with your star family, not just some random aliens that are cruising through the solar system. So that's what you set the intention that you just want to connect with your cosmic family and they know you, they know you, they know that you volunteered to come down here. So think of it like that, like it's your family. And also they won't give you too much than what you're ready to handle. Like if you go to make, if you ask to make contact or connect with them, 
do what I said. I actually have like videos on my channel, like exact starseed mantra to use to make contact, how to make contact, all of these different uh, resources. But just be specific that you want to make contact with your cosmic family of the highest love and light or ask them for not even necessarily to make contact with them, but ask them for help. You know, I'm asking my my star family of the highest love and light for help with whatever you're dealing with. And, and they may, they can be subtle. They're not, it's, it's not like you're going to just wake up one morning and there's going to be an alien in your room. They'll, they'll give you, they'll give you your space and they'll just kind of like give you like maybe hints um, or you may feel love. It's they, the love that you feel from them, from your, your cosmic family, it's crazy. Like it, it gets you very emotional. It's very beautiful. It's so pure. Mm-hmm. So don't, just don't be afraid of that. Um, okay. Setting the intention is super important and being specific, but yeah. So just start off by that. And then maybe if, if, if you're afraid, then that's the root chakra. Do you need to do some work on your root chakra, which is the, the red one at the very bottom. That's what the energy center that it was, that is, uh, that makes you experience fear and like anxiety and worry and things like that. So you could also do some root chakra work. (laughs) Well, and on that note, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you staying up this late with us and, you know, putting up with all my questions and, you know, taking audience questions and just being here. I hope to have you back one day. Yeah. Awesome. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Lily. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for staying up with me and enjoying the show. Like Lon said previously, we are taking a little bit of a hiatus. I will not have a show next week. Um, And yeah, so I will see you guys around. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.